Joyce Kilmer was right. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who ultimately lives with rain. Poems are written by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Joyce Kilmer. And so we're going to talk about trees today. We have two tree people. <laughs> we have Jolie Wanger and we have Wiley. They're both from Smart Trees, Hawaii. Uh, Jolie is the Kaulanani, Kaulunani volunteer and program coordinator, technical assistant, design and outreach person for Smart Trees Pacific. And Wiley is the geospatial information analyst. We're going to find out how those two those two jobs <laughs> play together. You got to you got to see this. Okay, welcome Jolie. Welcome Wiley. Thank, Thank, Thank you for Jay. having us. Nice to have you. So nice tell us you. about Smart Trees Pacific. Tell us what it does and how it connects, you know, to the government and to the public. Go first. Sure. 30 seconds. Okay, well, um, <laughs> Smart Trees Pacific is a nonprofit organization, and um, we were actually originally founded as the Friends of Hawaii's Urban Forest, and our role is to support the urban forestry programs and initiatives in Hawaii, and um, currently we manage a contract for the Ka'ulunani Urban and Community Forestry Program, which is the state program that um, is federally funded and um, we've been actually managing that mm -hmm. program for about, more than 20 years. <laughs> yeah, 90, 92, um, yeah. 1992. It started with my predecessor Teresa Truman Madriaga in 92 mm -hmm. and we're still going at it. Yeah, well, and so <laughs> all the more important in our day of concrete paving and the like. Absolutely. You know, talk about the canopy. Uh, the canopy is always at risk. It's at risk everywhere in the world, but it's at risk here too. You know, people have this nostalgic re remembrance of uh, Hawaii when Hawaii was much greener than it is today. Mm -hmm. And it's a battle Indeed. that we fight. So, Wiley, tell me, you know, how does geospatial <laughs> analysis, an an analysis relate? Uh, you know, to the company and to what uh, Jolie is doing. Oh, sure. About mm, six, seven years ago, when um, the U.S. Forest Service had pioneered a new way to study trees and canopies in uh, our urban areas. And we started with Baltimore, and we discovered that uh, we have a new way to study the size of canopy. Whenever we ask the government, how much canopy do you have? How many trees do you have? Most of the time, they take a guess. And so the lot, for the longest time, they've been doing sampling, uh, taking sample plots and so on to determine how many trees, 100,000, 400, 500, depends on the size of the city. And then in 2006 or 2009, around then, we, we started with uh, satellites. And we finally able to map all the canopies in, on Oahu from uh, Kapolei to Kaneohe. Uh, we finished the study in 2012. And to our amazement, Honolulu had 20% canopy compared to other cities that have more or less. And for, um, so is 20% good? It depends what you mean by good. Um, the, the prevailing... Uh, Expert believe 40% is ideal. Give me a city that's 40%. Do you know? Uh, oh, Baltimore? Yeah, somewhere? there was one just uh, yeah, not off the top of my head. I would guess <laughs> Portland. I would guess Portland, Oregon. Yeah, mm -hmm, maybe. Oh, that's probably it's a, a very good green guess. place, and uh, maybe yeah. some other cities. Mm -hmm. Maybe smaller cities more likely. Mm -hmm. more but the more eastern cities tend to have more mm -hmm. um, trees in their cities than, than the west. And, and also, in the matter of accounting, it's important. There's no standard method. Right now, we use a very strict method of urban, and other cities use less strict. 
method. Mm. So that number looks good. Mm. For <laughs> us, we're very, very um, strict about being urban. The state defines what urban means, and we just measure trees in the, this area. So for example, on the left and right side of H3, we don't count it. That's not urban. Mm. H3 is urban, but uh, the hills were conservation areas. Ah, so, so you're only talking about the, the city itself right. as an urban area. Yes. And now there's a, there's a policy behind all this. Federal government probably has a policy that makes it want to fund what you do. What is the policy? Regrow trees, like Johnny Appleseed? Let's see some more trees. Is that what it is? Well, it is a, a, a way to measure success so, or just to kind of place it in time. So if we know our baseline is 20%, then it allows us to set a goal if we want to. What's our goal now? We don't have one. But the city... We can make a goal right here. The city could set a goal, and we I'll know we could be... I'll set a goal with you right now. <laughs> what do you say, Jolie? What do you say, Why? 40% for 40 me. 40% <laughs> for you. Well, well I would I'd be tank. more conservative. You want 50%. I, I might be more conservative and be more realistic and say, right. let's go for... 25 percent or 30 well, and then go you know if we can it's meet it's that a, then we can increase our goal it's but a, it's a time it's a time factor right it is so and you're it's, talking yes, about you have the to next set five years incremental goals and wiley and i we're talking about the next Ultimate, 10 years yeah but far more and, than that but you know it, it's more complicated than that too okay, i bet we was going to get to that, to do that. <laughs> oh gladly <laughs> after we had did this have done the study and we realized what one percent means and like you and I had talked about before the show, how much does it cost to plant a single tree? And it's maybe a thousand or five hundred dollars a tree. And in five years, how big a tree will grow? And what does one percent mean? And it turns out uh, a study done by Casey Trees, it costs thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to create one to increase one percent in five years. So when we go for 20%, I would just go in for broke with you, Jay. <laughs> so in order to have 20% growth, it's a tremendous amount of money. But the, the more, um, the, the aspect that's causing the most problem is that we're actually going in the opposite direction currently. We're losing trees. <laughs> we did we're a... We're losing canopy. Yeah, so we had our... have data to show that. We do. We, we had our baseline done five years ago or so, and it was 20%, and then we um, repeated the study in fi after five years, and we had actually lost 4% 4%, of so it's hard to make that up, because that's a lot, as you said. Yeah, and then also if you take into account that the trees that we're losing have bigger canopies than what we would be replacing it yeah. with, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's going to take many years for those trees to grow and so what's happening? I mean, are there, are there uh, thieves that come out in the night and <laughs> steal the trees away? What happens to them? Why are we losing 4% of trees? What is, that's terrible. Who's doing that to us? The, the funniest part is not really one person, two person, but we have many development projects. And um, the funniest thing was uh, the largest de uh, de decrease was, came from our solar farm. Which is How very interesting, interesting right? Interesting. We support solar farms. Well, we yeah. think solar is great. All right. But this another. happened, they cleared <laughs> that piece of land. But it, what it really meant is everybody was doing their best, doing what they do. And, but without some organization to oversee or, or look after this, no one really knew. And I cut down a tree, you cut down a tree, yeah, it's nothing, right? But actually, when you come down to it, that's for two square miles we lost, 4%. That's what I meant. Um, I think we lost a lot also in, in the rail transit project. Oh, yeah. That's contributed. It just happened to be the, the timing of it, mm -hmm. you know, when, right when we yep. did that study. <clears throat> I uh, study. moved to Hawaii um, 51 years ago. And in those days, there were a lot more trees. Yep. And not only uh, in the urban area that you guys are concerned with, uh, which was very nice, by the way. I mean, it's really nice to live in an urban area uh, where the, the concrete is softened by, by the, uh, okay. the canopy. But also on the mountains, you know, where mm -hmm. trees are so important for hiking and enjoying the yeah. environment. 
you know, environmentalists come and they say, oh, you know, let's have a protest about some environmental issue, but they don't go hiking. <laughs> they, don't, they don't see what's up there or not up there. And I remember, and I'll get off my soapbox in a minute, <clears throat> I remember the banyan tree at the corner of King Street and Kamoku Street. Ooh. Back in the 70s, I think it was. It was a splendid tree. It was a huge tree. It was hundreds, many hundreds of years old. It was, it uh, was a piece of the landscape. Yeah. But they were widening King Street. And it had to go, I guess. And frankly, looking back, and there was, a, there was consternation and opposition to this removal of this uh, banyan tree, but they removed it. And uh, looking back, I really wonder if they needed to. They could have made the street, you know, come mm -hmm. around it somehow. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. would have understood and accepted that. Mm -hmm. But you know, progress and concrete. Concrete has value because once you build it, except for the roadways, you don't have to do anything. It lasts for hundreds of years, right? <laughs> Trees, you know, you have to make sure they get watered. You have to, you have to treat them and service them. And there's yeah. a certain amount of expense going forward. Sometimes mm -hmm. they die, and it's really a headache to get rid of them mm -hmm. after they, they die. Um, so I, I guess you could make an argument that we should, we should pave over the place. <laughs> we should make it all concrete, you know. It'll last forever that way. We won't have any expense in maintaining it, except for the streets. We will have expense maintaining the streets. <laughs> <laughs> the concrete. Yeah. The concrete. But if think. you're looking for an urban environment that has a quality of life, you really bloody better have trees, or there is Absolutely. no quality of life. It's just that simple. Yeah. Do you disagree with that? I do not disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> Will you show, show we, what you have brought for us about the value of trees? Yeah. 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 Let's we, see some slides, huh? <laughs> okay. We actually did this um, info, I guess it's an like infographic um, that was summarizing a lot of the research that was done in this area and how many benefits that we all receive from trees um, on an annual basis. And th this is data f that's specific to Honolulu. And um, a study was done by um, some scientists out of California and th with the Forest Service called the Street Tree Resource Assessment. And they, they took a lot of data and they um, came up with um, a total number, which I guess is around four million dollars annually that we receive, and so they put it, they couched it all in economic terms. But um, when you really p pull it out, you're looking at so many um, benefits for us in all different areas Identify of our quality them. of life. It's hard to read the. the yeah, chart. it is hard. So tell us two or three of them. <laughs> okay, so um, there's the environmental benefits that everybody thinks of first when they think of trees. Um, they help with our air quality, they help with um, cooling our the temperatures in including a lot of different schools, ways. Including our schools. Including our schools for sure. Um, and uh, I will be happy to talk about a program that we have right now that's trying to give out grants to schools to plant more trees because there's so many benefits that have been shown for schools in particular. So there's cooling. If you plant the tree in the right place on the campus, you're going to reduce a lot of the ambient temperature. Um, and even if your school has air conditioning, you can reduce the amount of um, demand on the electrical grid to run the air conditioners. You're being so scientific, Jolie. <laughs> um, you know, I go back to Joyce Kilmer. <laughs> And after this break, we're going to talk more about what Joyce Kilmer was really saying and how that applies to Hawaii. Ne? We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me every other Monday at 4 p.m. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, 
anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet into us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. We're back live with uh, Jolie Wanger and uh, Y. Lee. They're both from Smart Trees Pacific, which is a contractor for DLNR, looking at the canopy and uh, uh, organizing uh, grants for the planting of trees in Hawaii uh, in urban areas, which is really interesting, where we need them in a very special way uh, that Joyce Kilmer understood. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking in a break about Cujillo Avenue, how uh, Jeremy Harris, to his credit, uh, planted a lot of trees along Cujillo Avenue, and he had, he had foliage coming out into the bus lanes, I guess. Or maybe uh, Mufi Henneman just didn't like the fact that the trees were a credit to his predecessor, so he cut them down or back. And that was really an example of the hard-hearted kind of political shtick you get about the most important thing in our community, green. Green yeah. is so important it's for so our quality of life. Walk down the street, think you live in a place that's in harmony with the environment, and then they come and cut the trees down. It's like everybody makes a habit, a bad habit of cutting the tree down. What, what does it mean? You know, if I give you the 40%, Wiley, that you and I would like, <laughs> and she'll come along, I know she will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what kind of a city do we have then? I think we'll have a very, very nice walkable environment that you can go out and be shaded and it's a lot of oxygen for your lungs <laughs> and peace. And it just feel, make you feel relaxed and you'll go out, ha, ah, I am with nature mm -hmm. and my friends. It's a livable city. It That's becomes right. a little walkable. In, in the hot sun, you have That's shade. Right. In yeah. the rain, you have canopy that protects right. you. Yeah. I mean, everything works better. Your daily life is enhanced by this. To mm -hmm. see the green, it fills your soul. That's right. Yeah, right. and I don't know if you've ever witnessed when a big tree is suddenly missing and the shock that you feel because you've become, you know, that tree is part of your life and you don't realize until it's gone how much it, you know, has given to you, <laughs> you know, in many, in ways, like She's in tangible friends. ways. She's your become your friends. That's why she yeah. wrote the poem. Yeah. She had a special yeah. relationship and appreciation of every single tree. But the sad thing is, not only in Hawaii, but the sad thing is in, in urban environments around the country, around the world, it's a struggle to keep the trees planted. I yeah. grew up in New York. New York had a lot of trees in the city. Mm -hmm. They went out of their way to plant trees. Mm -hmm. Every little park had a lot of Central Park. Yeah. It's loaded with trees. People. Are, Frederick Law Olmsted designed uh, Central Park in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He set this in motion. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have visionary leaders yeah, to do this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to get to 40%? Well, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of people working together, mm -hmm. um, you know, a concerted effort and, you know, maybe the city, the mayor to set a goal and um, even if it's a mos modest goal to begin with, um, incremental, but, um, you know, we, we do our part by, you know, providing small grants to communities to plant trees or do other um, types of projects that improve our urban forest. Are you spending all the money you could? Or uh, is there a dearth of people asking? No, well, there really isn't. Um, we, we could f absolutely mm -hmm. um, receive a lot more grants than we do. I mean, if people asked? Yeah, yeah. Um, so how do you ask? I mean, tell them. They're, they're <laughs> right behind uh, camera one over there. <laughs> and uh, you, you have your choice, your, your chance to uh, tell them what to do to get on these programs. Well, if you have a project that is beneficial to the um, greater community, so it's in a public location where you know other people can access it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a park, but um, it has to be accessible to the public. And um, you can apply to um, our, us from our website. Um, it's the on the screen, I believe, um, and you can find us through Kaulunani. Um, urban and Community Forestry Program, if you search for it. Um, and we have all the information there to, on how to apply and what types of grants are, um, that we will accept. 
and they're usually small grants, but for this type of um, project, it's you don't necessarily need a large grant to make a big impact. So we're talking around ten thousand dollars or less usually. What about protecting old trees? What about historic trees that have been around, like my banyan tree, or this yeah. one recently in Waikiki, um, that you know that was not cared for, fell down. Oh, is that yeah. the Kiavi? I think so. Yeah, yeah I yeah. saw yeah. Yeah, somebody Kiavi. did a really nice tribute to it I, yeah. that I saw. Yeah. It was moving. Those those are our friends. They take care of us. Uh, yes, we can speak to nature through them. Yeah. And it's very sad when uh, the landowner, or for that matter, the government, doesn't attend to them. You know, if they don't uh, mow the grass or clean the grass in front of Iolani Palace, do you think they're attending to the trees there? I don't think so. And we have really got to get into a, a, a better frame of mind about dealing with this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I told you in the break or before about the, uh, what is it, the Willy Willy tree, mm -hmm. uh, which is now uh, a, a threatened, uh, going, inst uh, uh, what do you call it, going extinct, extinct here in Hawaii because of uh, some wasp from Asia. Little microscopic wasp, wasp kills them all. And you try and try, I had a client who had a huge, big Willy Willy Street downtown, and they tried, they spent a lot of money trying to save it, but nobody had the science to save it, to save it against that wasp. And so ultimately it died. And there's a little plaque now where it <laughs> used to live. Uh, and we've lost Willy Willy trees all over the state. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I suspect that had we attended to this earlier, had we done some science on it, had we found a way to preserve that tree, to care about it for that tree, we'd still have the tree. Um, so it's, it's all of us. It's not just DLNR. It's not just That's the right. legislature. It's everybody who's a property owner who has That's tree right. on property. And we can't be cavalier about this. And not at all. And we do have program try to approach each of these type of landowners, private, business, uh, state, and federal. And, and that includes military. and. Oh, yeah. So all of our, we all are involved in this. And if we need to have our environment improve, we have to be part of the solution. And it's not just somebody else's problem. Yeah. So our program is to help through funding, knowledge. And we want everybody out there like to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, we're welcome. We would like to work with them. That's why we have community in our name. It's. Mm -hmm. You know, we really are a community program, and yeah. we realize it takes the whole community to, you know, have a healthy urban forest. Yeah, and and to appreciate uh, public spaces. I mean, it's yeah. a very important word. We have covered it in, in the uh, architectural context many times, mm -hmm. but this is uh, an important complement to that. Uh, how Absolutely. can you have a, uh, a public space that is a, of comfort to the public, that a, you know, respite, if you will, mm -hmm. um, without having trees there? And I mean, little by little, Hawaii is <laughs> finding out how to do that. It's not a good idea. It doesn't work. Um, so if we want to build public spaces that are of comfort, that make us feel you know, in harmony w with the environment, where we can say we care, we really care about the environment, we really have to put our money where our mouth is, mm -hmm. including every landowner. You guys want to have contests, you know? <laughs> you take a public space and rate them on how well they're doing in the tree department. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think that's a great that's idea. That's an interesting <laughs> idea, Jake. Yeah. yeah so what's going to happen going forward? You're going to continue to check the canopy. Mm -hmm. You're going to right. continue to make studies and see if we're going up, down, or sideways. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in reality? <laughs> I think in reality, our approach is through education, and we're just getting started. Our citizen forestry program is a, a great success. We actually got people out exercising on the street, doing inventory for us. And the best part is they are convincing the, the local residents. Their neighbors. The, the neighbors, uh, the importance of the trees, and uh, why the city is doing it, uh, um, the best to help them. So that, the word is out, and, and uh, I was first, I have first-hand knowledge. I was there with the, <laughs> the citizen for us, and I walked the streets of Kailua, and uh, the great debate, and um, people came out of the house and tell us about their trees. Some are good, and some are not so good, but we take them both, and we report it to the city right away, and the city came out. So it, that, that relationship really works. Uh, and I, I think 
that's a, a good way to move forward. Citizen partic participation with us. By everyone. That's right. It's a question of quality of life here in these islands. We're about out of time. Okay. But uh, Julie, I want to offer you um, a great opportunity that I myself had a little while ago. It's to read the poem <laughs> here. You can read the poem and close our show, and I will be touched. Okay. Um, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Upon whose bosom snow has lain, who's in, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are written by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And, and only Joyce, people can plant a tree. <laughs> Joyce Kilmer was right. She was right. Thank, Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much.